So one of my goals during the subathon was to do a story time about when I went to jail as a 13 year old and it's not necessarily something that I would normally make a video about but it could be content. This is not wacky and wild and zany content. This is like maybe sad, maybe just like interesting, maybe like oh I know more about the streamer now. I don't know. At any rate I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, sweet little bean thank you for the gifties holy what the frick that's a oh story time yo we got story time chat do you want the story in the morning for breakfast no i'm not gonna be here streamer you want it now all right chat listen the story is not that great the story is like pretty bad actually freshman year of high school rough year for everybody right he's a weird kid he's a band kid he's an emo kid there was this girl i was dating my freshman year of high school we were two weird kids and we were dirty disgusting little breeders you know the kind in the hallway making out in between classes we were an absolute fucking public nuisance one day we were getting made major fun of we were in the corner of the library a secluded corner no one could see but there was a dude that was like pulling memes and shit he was like running around the corner and he's like taking pictures and stuff and he was like making fun of us made her very sad made me very angry so i go home and i make a very strongly worded facebook post very general very semi-targeted i reference um the virginia tech shooting and so i said if people keep doing stuff like that this school end up like another virginia tech anyway later that evening me and my grandma we go to get chicken strips from dairy queen we didn't have a mcdonald's in our town we get back from dairy queen we pull into the driveway i see cop cars the sheriff is here which isn't that big of a deal because there's like hardly ever any arrests in town we get out of the car and my grandma jokingly asks y'all here for she says my mom's name and they're like nope we're here for mr west and i was like my dad is dead oh shit what it all clicks in my head oh my god someone called the cops at the time it was an outlandish proposal they weren't even like really alarmed at all they just had to arrest me for making a threat and they tell me that i'm going to jail and i need to take out my contacts because i'm not going to want to have contacts in jail and i say oh i have to wear my glasses okay my school resource cop he arrests me he puts me in handcuffs he puts me in the back of his car we take an hour 20 minute ride i get there they process me full same ordeal as a regular jail you go to county same fucking thing i have to get fully naked the guy that processed me feels really bad he makes a lot of jokes he's like hey i know i'm a big black guy but don't be scared of me all right he like laughs at me the entire time and shit and he was huge six five massive this was a wall of a man and he has his clipboard and he's in charge of like describing me asking if i have any tattoos any markings any scars any stuff like that so i'm here I'm fully naked in front of this massive dude. This massive, massive, like I said, behemoth of a man. And I get one hand to cover my balls. And for some reason, with my other hand, I cover my nipples. I was really insecure about my man boobies. So I spend three days in there. I get in there on a Friday and I spend all of Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and I get out really, really early Monday morning. Made a couple of friends in there, but like the first day, they give you a hard time. They always give new people a hard time. There was one kid that was in there for seven years for beating up a cop and totaling the cop's uh, patrol car. Based. But he was like 15. And he said he had seven years. I was like, what? I don't Wait. Do that. And he was like, yeah, when I turn 18, I'm getting transferred. And he was like super proud of that. So while I'm in jail, I think Saturday or Sunday, I get like a phone call while I'm on the phone with my mom. My mom doesn't think anything much of it, but I can hear in her voice. She probably thinks like, this is the start. This is like the start of me ending up just like everyone else in the family and shit like that. You can kind of hear that in her voice a little bit, but she tells me that a kid at my school died. And I was like, Oh shit, for real? Like while I've been here at the fucking detention center for three days, someone at my fucking school died? And keep in mind chat, my high school had little over 380 kids in all four grades. Freshman through senior, 380 something kids. My class had 91. My mom said a kid named Caleb had shot himself while I was in jail and I was like, oh shit, which one? And she was like, I think it was, she named some kid and I was like, oh, I don't like that kid. He was like actually a fucking dickhead. And I was 13 and I had no concept of- Death. No concept of death but also like I didn't have strong um, morals. I was like, oh, okay, I don't care. I didn't really preface this. I didn't really build up any hype to this really well. My best friend at the time, his name was Caleb with a K. We had been best friends since like the first day of my freshman year. We sat next to each other in band. We both played trombone. There's a picture on my Facebook 
from all the way back in the day. So this is me um, probably five months before I went to jail. This kid, this kid right here went to jail. And right there behind him, that is my friend Caleb. While I was in jail that weekend, he was on the phone arguing with this girl, but he was on the phone arguing with her. He shot himself, he shot himself in the chest right here. According to her, he was like cleaning his gun or something. And she to this day won't actually talk about what happened, but he shot himself. And my mom couldn't confirm that over the phone. So Monday morning, I get out of juvie. Like finally, holy shit. First thing we do is go to Long John Silver's. God, I was so hungry. The food in there fucking sucked, except for the Salisbury steak. I'm a firm believer that the same Salisbury steak you get in TV dinners at Walmart, Target, whatever, are the Salisbury steaks they serve in jail. Same shit. Honestly, banger. First thing we do when, we, when I get out of jail is we go to Long John Silver's. I'm super excited. Everyone was in the car. I remember six people came in the four-door sedan. I get home. My mom actually had already arranged for my girlfriend to come over. So her mom drops her off here at my house. Not here, but at, at my the, the trailer house that I lived in. She gets in and my mom says, oh, hey, Jacob, here's the paper if you wanted to see about the kid that died at school. And I remember my girlfriend at the time being a little weird when she first saw me. She's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, just jail. She's like, what about Caleb? I was like, what? What do you mean? I don't give a shit about Caleb. Thought she was talking about the other Caleb that I didn't like. There was literally only two Caleb's in the whole high school. And then I get the newspaper and it was my best friend. So that's how I found out. The newspaper. Two days after it happened. I'm excommunicated from society because I'm in jail. I get like the one phone call my mom, who doesn't know how to use Facebook, who doesn't know where she put the newspaper, probably high on something. And uh, yeah, for my little boo-boo that I made, the Facebook post, they put me in AEP, which was the Alternative Enrollment Program. And I had to spend 90 days in there, which was the rest of the school year. I had to write a letter to the superintendent to ask if I could go to Caleb's funeral. As a student enrolled in the Alternate Enrollment Program, I was not allowed to attend my best friend's funeral. And so I had to beg. They eventually did let me go. I remember I was late to my friend's funeral. I was late because of my mom. My mom just wasn't ready. My mom wasn't ready and then she wasn't ready and then she wasn't ready and then she wasn't ready. And I remember we showed up late and we, the band, were going to play Amazing Grace for his funeral. But I didn't get to rehearse. I didn't get to practice with the band. First time my director had seen me because my director knew that I was going through something. I wonder how it looked from the outside. In one weekend, they lose two of their trombone players. One dies, one goes to jail. And there's only five trombone players. Dude, I can only imagine what the student body thought. Like maybe, oh dude, did you hear that Caleb died and Jacob is in jail? I have never thought about that until today. Every single person in the town is there. Mount Vernon, Texas, population 2000 something. It feels like literally every single person in the town is here. It's probably 800 people, cram packed. People are standing and there I am. And the band was actually like waiting on me because they knew I was coming and I'm late and I'm super nervous and I'm like shuffling through and I'm like laughing, I'm like smiling. Everyone's looking at me with this look on their face like I'm about to explode or something. But my band director uh, looks at me and she like kind of tilts her head and she smiles and we play Amazing Grace, and then they play um, the song that they picked for him was actually <laughs> In the End by Black Veil Brides, and that is the song that he showed me like a week before he died. He already put me on a Black Veil Brides. Like me and him, we bonded over a lot. He showed me what memes were because I didn't have internet and shit, didn't have a phone. So he showed me memes. He showed me this app called Rage Reader or like Rage Comics Reader or some shit like that. He put me on all different sorts of music. Firm believer this guy like kickstarted my interest in alternative music and rock and and metal and screamo when that was cool and then after he died i stopped listening to it completely but it was it was really weird because like i don't know he was just like there he is in his fucking casket and he's 15 years old and he's 15 forever now i'm 10 years older than him now like, that's crazy wow it's so surreal when you go to check and their profile picture hasn't changed in a decade. Yeah, it's weird. It's like I recognize this picture still. This was um him and his mom. I don't remember the last time I actually looked at these. This era, whenever someone would die and this was the kind of post that got put up in their honor. Can you imagine you die and you get hit with the fucking bottom text? Oh my God. See this dude right here on the left? This is the guy that was taking pictures. This is the guy that was taking pictures that day. It's what made me want to make that Facebook post. This guy right here. Such a small high school. This is definitely Definitely a little trip down um, memory lane here, boys. Anyway, sorry chat, huge fucking tangent there. I was exonerated a few months later, showed up in court three, four times. Prosecuting attorney, small town. He was my lunch pal when I was in middle school. He got a whiff of the neurodivergent brain way early on and he knew that I was a good kid. I had lunch with that guy once a week probably like for a whole school year. And then it turns out the prosecuting attorney and then my court appointed attorney were friends. And they both agreed that there's nothing really worth prosecuting me. There's nothing to make a martyr out of me. 
and given what went down that weekend and the severity of just the immediate reaction to the Facebook post, they felt like I learned my lesson, nothing on my record, but it was a felony charge. Snagging a felony charge at 13 is wild, by the way. Knock that shit off the bucket list real, real early.